Hey team, we're gonna learn how to use the Next.js image component with Cloudinary. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. Next.js is an awesome React framework that makes it easy for developers to get a powerful application up and running. They even support some first-class components like Next Image, which provides some things like image optimization and responsive sizing right out of the box. On top of that, Cloudinary is an awesome media management solution that allows teams to manage images and videos with a ton of other features built right in. The way it works is once you have an image uploaded, you can add these features directly to the image URL, which processes those transformations, or you can do a ton of different things like simple cropping, or you can even change the colors of that image. To learn how to use both of these things, we're gonna create a new Next.js application with Create Next App. So to get started in our terminal, we can run yarn create next app, and I'm gonna call my application my next Cloudinary. But once we run that, it's going to create our Next.js application and install all the dependencies to get started. And once it's done, we can CD into that new directory where we can run yarn dev or npm run dev, which will start up our local server, which when we open it, we can see that we have a brand new create Next.js application. So to start out, we wanna actually have an image that we can test and load inside of our application to use next image. So I'm gonna search site.nasa.gov for a galaxy. You can see I already did that before. Where if I now go to the images tab, I like space a lot. So I'm gonna choose a galaxy image. And let's say in particular, I'm gonna pick this one where I can right click and save it. And I'm gonna save it right inside of that directory, my next cloudinary in the public folder and I'm gonna call it Galaxy, where I'll just leave it as a ping for now. Now, if I open up my project in my favorite text editor, which I'm using VS Code, I can look inside of that public directory and I can see my Galaxy. So let's add it to our project. I'm gonna to go to the pages directory. I'm gonna select index.js, which is our homepage. And at the top, I'm gonna to first import our image component from next image. Now to add the image to the page, I'm gonna replace these cards that are shown by default by Next.js, where the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change these links to a div because we don't actually need it to be a link. I'm also gonna get rid of that paragraph tag, but I'm gonna then add the image component where we're gonna say our source is equal to galaxy.ping, which because we're putting it in our public folder, we can reference it as if it's coming from the root of our project. Now, I wanna also add the width and height. In this case, I'm gonna specify width equals 1000, my height equals 750. And I also wanna add an all attribute because we always wanna be accessible. And I'm gonna say Galaxy. And finally, I'm gonna update this H3 to instead say local image, just so that we know what we're looking at. And once our page reloads, we can see that it's already loading our image. Now, if we inspect that, we can actually look inside and see that this image is being served from Next.js, where it also includes some responsive image sizes just to try to keep things a little bit more optimized, but it's essentially showing that it's an image tag that it's generating based off of our image and our attributes. Just a quick note while we're in here, it's also important to know that Next.js actually wraps the images with a div tag, so it's not going to be valid if you try to nest one of these images inside of a paragraph tag. So next, let's try to do the same thing, but let's load that image from Cloudinary. Now, I already uploaded that image myself to Cloudinary using this URL. So if we go back over to our application, I'm gonna simply duplicate this line. I'm also going to get rid of the second link card since we don't need that anymore. I'm gonna change the header to Cloudinary image, and then I'm gonna specify the source as that URL, and I'm just gonna leave everything the same. When we go back to our browser though, we can see that we get an error. Now the issue is with Next.js image is not going to allow you to specify any image by default. We need to actually specify the image domains that Next.js can recognize. So back in our project, let's create a new file in the root of our project called next.config.js, where we're gonna create a new configuration with module exports, set that equal to a new object, where we're gonna specify the images object, where we're gonna also specify the domains, which we're gonna set equal to a new array, where we're gonna take that domain of our image and we're gonna paste it right in as part of that array. Now at this point, if you try to actually reload the page, you're gonna see that it still doesn't work. Because we made a change to the next config, we need to actually restart our development server, where now once we restart that, we can try reloading the page. 
and we can see that once it loads, we now have our image coming straight from Cloudinary. Now using the URL directly inside the component is a great way to do that. Now I have this static URL on hand that I can pass right into it, but what if we wanted to provide some transformations or generally programmatically create this image URL? That way we don't have to manage it with static strings kind of like we did here. In order to dynamically generate these images, we're gonna use Cloudinary build URL, where with this NPM package, we can provide our cloud name, as well as the image ID, as well as any transformations that we want. And it's automatically going to build that entire URL for us where we can pass it right into our application. So in my terminal, I'm gonna run yarn add cloudinary build URL, where it's going to install that project and I'm gonna spin back up my development server. Now that we installed that dependency, we can actually import it. So we're gonna specify import build URL from cloudinary build URL. At the top of my component, I'm gonna now use that. So I'm gonna create a constant called URL, where I'm gonna set that equal to build URL, where the first argument is going to be the ID of my image. Now in my instance, that ID is going to be this slug here, which you can find inside of your Cloudinary dashboard. But for me, I'm gonna paste this in as the first argument, where the second argument is going to be a new object. And we're gonna use cloud, where I'm gonna create a new object to configure that. I'm also gonna specify my specific cloud name, which in my instance is Faye, but I would recommend that you create your own Cloudinary account, which I'll include a link inside of the description, just to make sure that you're registering under your own account for any of these images that you upload. So now we can take that URL variable, we can scroll down to our images. I'm gonna create yet another card. I'm gonna actually duplicate that correctly, get rid of the third card, let's say Cloudinary dynamic, but I'm gonna pass instead of this string, I'm gonna pass in that URL as my source. And now, as we would expect, we can see that image directly in our application. And if we open that up in a new tab, we can see that it's coming from Next.js, but that Next.js is pulling that URL from that Cloudinary address, which was dynamically generated for us. The cool thing is we can even apply transformations or really at this point, we can use anything from the Cloudinary API. So for instance, if I wanted to specify transformations and I'm gonna say effect, where I'm gonna set that equal to name is pixelate, which is the type of effect that I'm choosing from the Cloudinary API. And I'm gonna set a value of that to 40. And now we can see once the page reloads, we get that same image, but it's pixelated because we used a Cloudinary transform directly from their API. Now, if we open that up and we look at the end, we can see that that was automatically added to the URL using our Cloudinary build URL API. Now this alone provides some really powerful things out of the box, such as loading an image with Next.js locally where it's going to optimize that image along with other features. We can also load in an image from Cloudinary where we could take advantage of the Cloudinary API using things like transformations where pixelation is really just a simple, fun way we can show this, but there's a lot of powerful transformations that we can do for our images. But what is another practical use case for this? When we're loading our images, if we're on a fast connection, we might not be used to having to wait for images to load, where even if I hard refresh here, we can see that we get a nice little flash until it loads in. But what if I try to load some kind of really blurry, low quality image in the background so that we can still get a great experience instead of that flash of white before our image actually loads in. Back inside of our application, I'm gonna duplicate this URL where I'm gonna set this equal to URL blurred, where I'm gonna change my effect to specify blur 1000, which is going to be the setting for this particular effect. I'm also gonna set the quality of this to one, meaning Cloudinary is going to super compress this image to a really low quality, just to make sure that when we're serving this, it's as small of a file as it can be. Just like our other images, let's first get rid of this link card We'll duplicate one of our other ones, and I'm gonna change that to URL blurred, and let's call this blurred placeholder. 
if we load this in our application, we can actually see that this looks really weird. It's distorted. Now, we're not going to actually use this blurred image inside of the Next.js image component, but I wanted to show a little gotcha here just in case you come across this, where with Next.js image, as we saw before, our images are actually getting optimized, meaning they're getting compressed and whatever Next.js's tools that they're using so that they're serving smaller images. So what's happening is we're blurring that image with Cloudinary, but then we're trying to optimize it with Next.js on top of it, which is creating this really ugly look. To fix this particular issue, we can pass in an, a prop to our image component called unoptimized equals true. Where now, if we load that inside the browser, we can see that we're getting that raw blurred image and it looks great and we'll use that as our background. Now, as I mentioned, we're not gonna actually use that as the image. So I'm gonna first revert that to URL. I'm gonna get rid of image optimized, unoptimized, and I'm gonna wrap this in two div containers where the reason we're gonna do this is we're gonna create a responsive image so that even when our image isn't loaded yet, we're still going to be able to maintain a responsive size for that image. On our first div, I'm gonna pass in some configuration CSS we're here, the first thing we're doing, we're setting it to relative because our inner div is going to be absolutely positioned. So we want it to be absolutely positioned to its parent, which is this div. Now the second, we're gonna set a height to zero where we're gonna use a cool trick. We're using padding top with a height of zero. We're able to set a ratio for an image where if you notice, we're setting this ratio of 750 width or height rather divided by the width multiplied by 100 is going to give us a percentage for what that ratio is going to look like inside of the browser. That way it'll maintain that ratio image size as it's scaling up and down inside the browser. Now, if you also notice, we're passing in our background image of URL blurred, we're setting a background position of center just to make sure it's nice and center inside of our project. And finally, a background image of size of 100 so it shrinks only to that container size. Now, just to test this, this works, I'm gonna comment out my image component. And if we go back over to the browser, we can see that it's still loading and it even does so responsively because of the way that we're doing that little ratio trick. So we're all nice and set where we have our image where we're gonna load that as a placeholder for our real image. So now if I load this as is, it's not going to be positioned correctly within the DOM relative to the parent. So the last thing I need to do is set some styles on my inner wrapper div. We're here, I'll set my style tag where I'm gonna set the position of this to be positionally, to be absolutely positioned with a top of zero, a left of zero. So that way it's positioned absolutely to the parent and it's anchored to the top left corner. Now this is going to be hard to see because it still loads pretty fast, but if you notice that in the beginning, we can see it very quickly fade from a blurred image to the pixelated image. Now this is fast, I'm on a fast connection, so this is kind of hard for me to see, and you might be running into the same thing, but we'll show you a quick trick here for how you can kind of simulate a delayed effect just to prove that this is actually working. At the top of the page, I'm gonna import use effect and use state from react i'm going to create a new instance of that state and i'm going to call it image and set image and i'm going to set that to use state with a no default in it but i'm also going to use effect where inside of that effect i'm going to first add a dependency of an empty array that way it only runs the first time where i'm also going to use a set timeout where i'm going to say that after two two seconds if i type that correctly I'm going to set the image as my URL. So what's happening here is after two seconds via the set timeout, I'm gonna set image, which is in my instance of state here, I'm gonna set that image to the URL that we want to ultimately show. But before that, that image isn't going to be equal to anything, meaning we can dynamically see if that image is available yet. Back down inside of the image, I'm gonna first change that URL to image. I'm also gonna wrap it with that image. That way, again, what's gonna happen is when that image is undefined, which is the default state, it's not gonna show anything. But as soon as those two seconds are up and we set the new state with that image URL, it's going to load in this image when it's available. So now if we go back and we reload the page, we can see after two seconds that it loaded in our new picture. Let's try this again one Mississippi, two Mississippi, we can see that pixelated image come in there. 
We can even go back and remove that pixelation transformation just to see it a little bit more clearly, where now if I reload the page, we can see that it loaded in from that blurred effect into our nice crisp galaxy. Now again, we only did this for a proof of concept just to show that delayed effect. So before you actually save this, make sure you get rid of that simulated delay. That way your images are always loading as fast as they can for the people that are visiting your project. But while these are simply use cases, it's a really powerful way, especially for image heavy websites, to take advantage of the many features between Next Image as well as Cloudinary to both load optimized images as well as perform transformations on the fly programmatically. Both the Next.js image component as well as Cloudinary are two powerful tools in our belt of being able to provide a better experience for the people visiting our projects. Again, while this is a simple example, other things you can do with Cloudinary are generating dynamic social images or really anything that you can think of that would involve images. What's your favorite use case for Cloudinary? What have you used for in the past? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.